every eight minutes, another person is added to the organ transplant waiting list. Currently, there are over 100,000 patients in need. But today, NYU Langone Health is announcing a possible breakthrough in organ transplantation that may give new hope to those awaiting a match. And ABC's Morgan Norwood joins us now with the latest on this story. Morgan, always good to see you. But this is a fascinating story, so uh, tell us more about it. Hi, DeMarco. Yeah, this is really fascinating uh, science as well, but then it's also about hope. And I think for our viewers, I kind of want to lay out how, you know, we followed the science on this particular story. We first traveled to Virginia where all of this is happening. We visited the research farm and the state of the art laboratory. This is a highly secure facility where we had to scrub in and out every single day. Our cars even had to be decontaminated as we passed through the pig pens. We got a chance to really see the science, how they edited these particular pig genes out of these kidneys and then add in human genes to make it less likely that your body will reject it. But then we also met patients, wonderful patients like Tawana Looney, who NYU announced today as the latest xenotransplantation patient. Her story is really fascinating because she's a donor herself. She gave one of her kidneys to her mother who was experiencing organ failure, but then later she herself would also have that same fate. She had preeclampsia during pregnancy, so her kidney started to fail. And you can just imagine how difficult that is as, you know, a young mother going through pregnancy. Also on the, in the dialysis chair every single day. She does that for eight years. And just when she thinks she's about to get a human transplant, she discovers that she also has a condition where her body makes too many antibodies. Mm -hmm. So fast forward to now and having this pig, uh, this gene edited pig kidney, this is really uh, transforming her life in more ways than one. She's now off of dialysis. We were the first to sit down with her maybe about a week ago, just days after this surgery, and she says that she is feeling incredible. She says that she's finally able to have her life back. Dr. Darian, this isn't the first time we've heard the animal to human transplant mm -hmm. happening. How is this case different than some of the others? Well, this is a science called xenotransplantation. To answer that question, I interviewed yesterday Dr. Peter Chin Hong. He is the director of transplant infectious diseases at UCSF, and he said something so helpful. Uh, the three things that they're looking for trying to prevent, or two things they're trying to prevent, are rejection and infection, and they want to make sure that the organ functions. So how do they do that? They go through gene editing. Uh, that is to prevent, hopefully, the options or the opportunity of rejection in the patient's body. And then you also want to improve that function. Also, this patient herself is very different from the prior stories we've seen. Unfortunately, when we've had demises or deaths after transplanting animals into humans, we've seen or that has likely been from a complication of other comorbid conditions, heart failure, so on and so forth. This patient suffers mainly from kidney disease. So with that, where is hope, given that her status is healthier than before, that she has a, a lot better prognosis. So what does this mean for the future of organ transplant? You know, this is still very much in the early part and in the infancy of this science, but we're very much on a steep learning curve. This morning when I sat in the press conference with the patient, as well as the surgeon, something that stood out to me was how many people this could help. You know, there's estimated 35 million people living with end-stage renal disease, uh, uh, 500,000 currently on dialysis. If this were to be able to be scaled up, I can only imagine how many people would be able to be taken off dialysis and be able to live their life fully. Mm. Uh, Dr. Darren, you just mentioned hope. Morgan, right as we first came to you, you mentioned hope. You've talked to this patient and to the doctors that were part of her team. Why is hope such a central part of this story? Yeah, you know, it's everything, right? When you're going through something like this, you know, you think that you're at the end of the road. In many cases, that is uh, what so many patients like Tawana experience. But then also think about the science here. And I think Dr. Jerrion just hinted at this and, and talked about what this means for, for for the science of all of this. Every single time that they do one of these groundbreaking transplants, they're headed right back to the lab. I mean, this is a critical learning opportunity. So hopefully for the next one uh, and then the ones after that, they're perfecting the science even more. So, of course, this ensures that there's confidence confidence in this particular um you know, type of transplant and this technology. But the other thing that I want to point out, what makes this so important in terms of hope, is that these are granted under what's called the FDA's Compassionate Use Program. So the FDA is very much locked into this. I mean, there's a possibility of clinical trials for full FDA approval. So hope is very central to this. I hope is indeed the word for the day. Morgan, thank you. We appreciate it again uh, for informing us on this fascinating story here. And by the way, you can hear more on farm in the future tonight at 7 on ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis. So check it out.